Here's another baby, the, the one that you just saw before that one didn't survive. But here's a baby born, in other words, that survived with congenital syphilis. And all this drainage you see coming out of the mouth, coming out of the eye, you put in a dark field microscope, they're crawling with spirochetes. In other words, the uh, baby basically got syphilis while in Europe. Now, here is a baby being born already with secondary syphilis. And a lot of times, what happens is that the mother, in other words, will see uh, these rashes and might just think it's a diaper rash, not realizing that the baby basically is in congenital syphilis, so they might put the ointment on it and it's not really going any place. Uh, the astute pediatrician would generally pick it up. One person's cold sore can be his or her partner's case of genital herpes. As we said, you have herpes type 1 that's up, that's on the lip. You have ter herpes type 2 in the genital area. But in this day and day age when you have so much mix and match of mucous membranes, you can have herpes type 2 up and herpes type 1 down. So it simply means that um, an individual with um, herpes, in other words, you have the wife who uh, accused the poor husband of um, giving her herpes that he got from someplace else, did not realize that <coughs> he basically, the husband got the herpes from her because she had cold sore, and then with the mixed and mass of mucous membrane, he transmitted it to her genital area, and of course, she's getting ready to throw him out, using him fooling around, uh, for us to say, listen, madame, you gave him herpes. And he just, you gave him herpes to the lips, and he gave you whatever. So, you can transmit the cold sore to the genital area, and you can transmit the cold sore to the next person, and that person can transmit the herpes type 1 to the genital area, which you now have genital herpes. In other words, that a lot of times, that's how we generally start out, as little pimp, little um, pimples, and then that's very hurtful, and then they join together. Patient at high risk of having chlamydial infection, patient with gonorrhea, Patient with non gonococcal urethritis or mucopopular cervicitis, men with epididymis or first post gonococcal urethritis, women with endometritis or salpingitis, sexual partners of infected individuals, neonates of women with untreated chlamydial infection. As we said, that the baby coming down the birth canal has the ability, can pick up chlamydial infection. That chlamydial infection not only can cause damage to the eye, it also can cause what? Respiratory, Respiratory um, disease also. That's the reason why they put silver nitrate for gonorrhea, tetracycline and erythromycin basically for chlamydia. That's herpes, you can just see one little bump. So what is that? Herpes is flat, multi lesion. Now that's what we call a. You look at the sideways a bridal nose. That's where the spirochetes basically eat away the cartilage of the nose, and the nose basically collapse. In other words, the spirochete eats away the cartilage, the bone that holds the nose up. Yeah, bridal nose. Saddle nose. Saddle nose. Saddle nose. That's purpose of the cervix. In other words, the cervix basically has no nerve ending. So in other words, 
you're not going to feel any pain uh, in the cervix. Basically, that's the only thing. This was the same baby that was say died with um, congenital sickness. Now, here we're talking about um, chlamydial infection, where the uh, one uh, the lip node is rather large. Um, condyloma. In other words, it, it is caused by a chlamydial infection. To make the diagnosis, we can aspirate the lymph node and basically look for chlamydia. There's a small growing lymph node there, right? Yes, yes. Really? yes. When we talk about HPV, now we refer to this as cauliflower. Um, this is HPV, the human papilloma virus that causes genital warts. In other words, that's the reason we always encourage people that if we took a if we took a vote right now, which um, the generally the way I generally take the vote. I assume that none of you have sex. I don't want anybody saying I'm asking them about their sex or whatever. So if I assume that none of you had sex, and I say to you, if you are going to have sex, would you have sex with the lights on or the light off? Now all those who say lights on, show your hand. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12. Well, that's real. <laughs> that's extremely real. Because when we do that, say, among, I think it was about 300 people in the hospital years ago, 75% had the lights off. You should probably ask it before when we started, then mm -hmm. you'd probably have a different answer. What? When, before we started this course, yeah. if you ask that question, you probably get a different answer. <laughs> <laughs> so 75% 70, had sex with the lights off. So it simply means that what we always say is that you're better off having sex with the light on because you have the opportunity, you know, you're doing a little whatever, you can see what you're dealing with. In other words, the female has the opportunity to basically know, you know, to say what she's looking at, you see something like this, you're not going to have sex with a guy. They don't what? Feel. Well, they know it's there, but I mean, I, I had a guy come in to, with a dark field lesion, as big as, more than bigger than a quarter. And, um, when was the last time I had sex? Two hours ago. I had a huge lesion, and he can't claim that, well, he got a haircut. The point is, the lesion is crawling with spirochete, but he had sex two hours ago. So the question is, didn't this woman see this? Or maybe she didn't. And maybe he really thought he had a haircut, didn't really believe that he had syphilis. It's crawling with syphilis. So, you know, the thing about it is, is that, um, you know, Take a look. Now, <coughs> we had... What? That's a penis. Hmm? That's a penis. Yeah, that's a penis. A 12-year-old boy. <laughs> um, we had... Um, I was called to the emergency room, and we got in the emergency room, and... Um, this kid came up to the uh, office. We have a room that we do dark with, uh, with the doctor and his mother. And um, we looked at the child. We did a dark field microscopy on the child, and he is crawling with syphilis, his spirit. Of course, he said he had no sexual contact whatsoever, and therefore, um, there's no way he could get syphilis. So he was with his mother. This is underage. He was treated. Um, I think it was three days later, uh, out in the main corridor, he said, there's a little boy 
would like to talk to me. So he came into the office and said, what are you doing here? He said, well, he's here without his mother. I said, well, I can't talk to you. Uh, he said, but I want to tell you something. So um, I said, but I'm not allowed to talk to you know, with your mother. But he began to talk. And, um, of course, I listened. And what <laughs> happened is that he said, well, I did have sexual contact, but I didn't want to tell with my mother there. There was an 18-year-old girl in the neighborhood who basically was handing out sex to these little boys, and she had syphilis. So in another couple of days, we had about four other little boys came in, I uh, was treated for syphilis. So, you know, we... Did you have cancer? We, what? Did you have cancer? Did what? Did you have cancer? Did they have any kind of work? Yeah, because they had to report it to the health department. So, you know, they, she... So, as we say, you know, I am okay, are you? That last, before that, that previous time, the um, like the person who was in the what was that one? The last one? Yes, sir. But this was after he started getting antibiotics. Oh, okay, because it was fine. He started healing.